Okay, so we are uh, diving in and covering some more features in logic. Uh, we will probably recap some of the things that we covered uh, last time in the process. Uh, but I've got another list of uh, features I want to get to on Blackboard if you want to follow along to the things that I'm going to try to uh, cover today. Uh, so on, in today's folder for Tuesday, March 19th, is the list of things that I'm going to try and cover. Okay, um, But the one, thi one thing that you uh, will want to know how to do, so this controller that we're using in our hardware demo, okay, not only acts, can act as a standalone hardware controller, it can, because of the USB connection, talk to uh, logic. Okay, So if you want to use one of these keyboards, and I encourage if there's a few of you that want to do this uh, now for the in-class demonstration, because we are going to be playing some things. So if you want to grab a keyboard, they're there in the cabinet. Connecting these mini controllers is really a three-step process. Let me fix the lights here. So I'm grabbing them. Okay. One, you want to plug in the keyboard. Two, you want to plug the keyboard into your computer. And three, make sure the power light comes on. Okay. It's pretty simple. But uh, that's really kind of a three-step process for confirming that these, these keyboards are working and that they're talking to logic. The other thing you can do uh, to confirm that the keyboard is being seen by logic, okay, if you go to the audio MIDI setup, which might not be in your dock by default, do you have a little black and white keyboard in the dock? Anybody? Or no? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, uh, the, uh, if you don't have something in the dock, if there's a program that I mention in class ever that you don't have in the dock, wow, that's great. I don't need that. Um, go to at command spacebar, gives you the search option, and you can just type in audio MIDI or audio or MIDI. It should be the top hit, audio MIDI setup, okay? We were tweaking some of this on the audio side of things. But if you go to the window here, uh, no, 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 I take that back. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah, here, window, show MIDI window, okay? This should, you should, you probably, you might see some, a variety of devices, and you, you probably don't see as many devices as I do because I've got several different drivers installed for different uh, hardware interfaces that I use, okay? Uh, but you should see one of them that's not, grayed out like this, not translucent, ghosty, okay? That tells you that uh, your MIDI device has been uh, seen by the operating system, okay? So command space, type in audio MIDI or, or audio or MIDI. The top hit should be this audio MIDI setup. And under window, show the MIDI window. And you should see whatever your device is, like not grayed out, not ghosty, okay? The other thing you can do in terms of set, uh, testing your setup, uh, there is this test setup button that when you click on a certain device, okay, everybody hear those lovely little chimes? Let me switch my audio input here. here. Okay. Okay. Everybody hear that little chime? That's, that's telling you that, that's being produced by the operating system telling you that, hey, I just got a mini message. Okay, it's a lovely little sound. Okay, uh, I, I I'm a little nostalgic because there used to be a, a a nice voice that said MIDI received, which was kind of pleasant to hear, um, but they decided in their wisdom to change the sound design on that. Okay, so that's one way you can test your setup uh, before getting into logic. Okay, so I'm going to quit this. Um, usually, if this lights up when you plug it into a USB port, Logic is going to see it, okay? So we're going to start f with fresh with Logic with a nice blank project. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Logic. I'm like, maybe get these off my, okay. Now Logic might do you a favor and try to open the last project. Did anybody else have that happen to them? Yes? Okay. Uh, for this unit project, you are going to be starting afresh. You're going to be starting anew. You're going to be starting with original material. So you're, you want to start with a new blank project, okay? How do we do that? Well, if we go to the file menu, our first option, as usual, is new, okay? So click on new, and it should ask you if you want to close this, the usual song. You can have multiple 
projects open in Logic at the same time, but it can get rather confusing because they all have windows, okay? So go ahead and close that. This is what the new project window looks like in Logic. Is everybody able to get here? This is a, 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 an important distinction. If, if you're someone who's a Windows user and is used to closing the window to close a project, those are not the same thing on a Macintosh. You can close windows all day long, but the program stays open until you quit the program. Closing the window does not equal quitting the program. Okay, That's something uh, it's Macintosh 101. So get used to that uh, fact, and that's a, that's a, that's a ch mental shift, I realize, for those of you that are used to using Windows. Okay. Um, or Ubuntu even, I think, even does that. So, But on the Macintosh, you have to literally quit the program, okay? And you have to literally close the project, not just close the window, okay? So this is our new project window. You can see that there we have a, a, a couple different options here, okay? Uh, producing, composing. Uh, but what I really want you to uh, focus on for starting this project is an empty project, okay? That's what we're going to start out with today. You can play with these the, uh, uh, these templates at other times and know that you can actually add these templates. So uh, probably not a good idea to do that in this lab, but if you're someone that has logic on your own computer, you can actually create templates based on common um, configurations you're using for different projects, okay? So if you've got a set of synthesizers that you like, that you use on multiple projects for composing, you can actually set that up as a template and then hit uh, start from template and it'll load all those synthesizers for you and be ready to go. Saves you a lot of configuration time. Okay, uh, In the studio over there we have a, a template that's set up for all the synthesizers that are in the studio basically so they're already pre-configured in your project. Okay, We're going to be using an empty project today. Okay, First thing that pops up when you launch an empty project is this new track window. Okay, um, we're going to stay with software instruments. That's what we're doing uh, for this unit project, okay, is strictly using software instruments. But notice that there's another option here that says external MIDI. What do you think that does? Activate your controller. What now? Activate your controller. Activate your controller or your, yeah, your synthesizer, okay? It actually lets Logic talk out to some piece of external synthesis gear, okay? So you can actually send MIDI messages out to that piece of gear and have it render it into sound. Do you have a question? Also, like your, your keyboard's included in that, in that MIDI keyboard? Uh, no, no, you can use the MIDI keyboard just to drive the software instruments if you have a controller like this. Okay, It's strictly for sending MIDI out to some device that's going to turn, that's going to synthesize its sound outside of the computer. Okay, That's what external MIDI is for. We're going to use a software instrument. Uh, go ahead and create two tracks for now. Okay, if you forgot, you can go back. But I'm going to go ahead and hit create two tracks. Okay, if you're someone that hastily put in one, how can I quickly add a track? track new. Yeah, track new. Or click on where? I think under click here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wow. JP found an even faster way to do it. Okay. You just double click here, okay, and you can hit delete to delete tracks as well, okay. There's also this handy plus button here as well, okay. Okay, somebody's got the test oscillator running, good. Uh, okay, so starting a new project, adding new tracks, we covered that. Window sets, this is something that uh, tends to be confusing at first for Logic users, but once you get to know it, you will learn to love it, okay. That's the window sets, the screen sets. You'll notice up here next to where it says window, at the top menu, it says screen set one, okay? And the reason this usually frustrates uh, new Logic users is because these screen sets are actually connected to the number keys at the top of your keyboard. So those keys one through zero, if you accidentally press those, whoops, I hit the six key, something changed. Whoops, I hit the four key, something changed. You might notice some window shenanigans shifting around, okay? But you'll also notice that right here next to screen set, it says four, okay? If I click and hold, I, because I now pressed one, four, and six, it's got a rain, it's got a, a, a window, a screen set set up for those different keys, okay? So if I go to screen set one, okay? Uh, if I now change, to, I'm going to go ahead and hit, let's follow, follow these steps for me, okay? If you're in screen set one, go ahead and press two. 
Okay. When I press 2, you notice it says screen set 2 now. I'm going to go ahead and open, click on where it says piano roll and open that up because I might want to be making some changes there. Okay. And then I'm going to actually go over here to instrument 1. I'm going to click on instrument 1 to highlight it. And I'm going to actually insert, I don't know, I'm going to go with the ES1 this time. So I'll insert an ES1. That's going to bring up the ES1 window for that plugin, okay, which has this green alien sheen to it, okay. Everybody will follow that along. Everybody will, it doesn't matter if you pick the ES1, just go to instrument track one and insert a plugin and have its window open. Everybody at this point where you've got the piano roll open in your arrange window and you've got a plugin window open. Again, it doesn't matter which plugin. Just pick a plugin, open it up. Okay. Now, do me a favor. If you make sure, it, did it say it still says screen set two at the top there? Make sure it still says screen set two at the top. Yes. Here it says one. Okay. Okay. If it says one, you didn't press two at the beginning, but that's okay. Pick a different number other than the number that you see next to screen set one and push it. Watch what happens. It goes back to my basic arrange setup. Yes? Everybody able to do that? So I don't care what number was next to your screen set when you had the plugin open, but just pick a different number, push it, and watch how it resets to the original screen set. Okay? If you want to get the, the screen set back with the piano with the, the, the piano roll open and the plug-in open again, go back to that number that you had there, too, for, was what it was for me. Look, sounds like some of you still had it on one. Okay? Everybody see what this is doing? It basically saves your window layout and attaches it to a number on the keyboard. Why would this be handy? Yeah, if you're working with multiple synths, or 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 even audio versus MIDI, or even dragging clips in versus editing things in the piano roll, or working with this plugin with this uh, this software synth plugin with this effects plugin, you can actually set up up to ten window sets using the numbers on the top of your keyboard and have them kind of saved as presets. You see why that would be useful? Okay. It's frustrating at first if you don't know that because what happens usually for beginning uh, logic users is they accidentally press one of those keys and all of a sudden their windows go whoop and they don't know what happened. Okay. So pay attention to this screen set number at the top and you can start to make use of this by maybe having different screen sets for your different plug your different instrument tr tracks. That that would be one way to use this right off the get go. Okay. But I can easily switch between these now without having to close a window, open another window, close a window, open another window, etc. Okay, that's screen sets. Okay, uh, okay, MIDI entry. Those of you that have uh, MIDI keyboards, okay, you should be able to play your keyboard and hear it. But once you've got a plug-in on a track, okay, and you've got your USB keyboard connected, you should be able to hear it when you play. Okay. Two things. You want to make sure you've got the, the track highlighted. That's what you're going to hear, whatever track is highlighted. Okay. You will also notice down here in the, in the timeline, okay, where, see where I'm circling down here with my cursor? As you play, you see where it says no in and no out? Try, if you play a note, you'll see that it actually shows you what note was just received. Okay. Not only that, if you play more than one note, it's actually going to tell you what chord you're playing. This is a fun way if you're if you're in a keyboard class or a theory homework class, right? Uh, you can actually play it into Logic, and it'll tell you what the chords are. You see that? Okay, it's telling me down here what chords I'm playing. Okay, so now you can hear your keyboard. Now you can hear the software synthesis and play it with your keyboard, okay? Um, the next step you probably want to do is actually be able to record your performance on this keyboard. Is that? Let's get back to this here now. Okay, so you've got your keyboard talking to Logic. Okay, now you want to actually 
record your MIDI performance. Okay? You'll notice by default when you have a track selected, the, the red R light, the record enable, if you remember back from when we were dealing with Pro Tools, that record enable process is very similar here inside of Logic. Okay? Uh, by default, when you click on a software instrument and you're, and you're listening to it, you're going to be actually uh, in record enable mode. So the next thing you need to do is actually just go down to the transport at the bottom of the window and hit record. It's going to count off and let you start recording. Okay, so. Hit stop. Yes, Alex. I was going to say, you, you can, we can also just hit the R key. And R key? Okay. Yeah. Good. So that's a good keystroke to know as well. Okay. So, everybody clear on how to record MIDI into it, into a track? Okay. Is this the same thing as recording the audio from the software synthesizer? No. Why? Yeah, I saw you shaking your head, Maisha. Why do you say that? Yeah, audio is not MIDI, okay? So what you just recorded is not the sound output from the synthesizer. It is the MIDI performance that you just that I just did at the keyboard. And then you put it in the big one too. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, so that's a good point. So we've got this instrument here that I just played. Lovely. Okay. If I don't like the sound of that synthesizer anymore, all I have to do is go down here and change. I don't know. I'll go over to the EFM one. Great. Awesome. And now it's awesome. excellent. Okay. That's why you're able to change sounds so easily, because all you've done at this point is record the MIDI instructions for how to create that performance, not the audio output of that track. Okay. Uh, I might be able to cover that on Thursday, but that is not what I wanted to cover. Uh, actually, how to convert that into audio so you can edit the audio. Uh, there is a way to do that. Uh, we're not going to cover that today. Okay. So let me close that. Let me get on my list here. Okay, so I've mentioned the menus, right? The fact that there's a menu at the top of the screen, and there's also menus here on the arrange window. Uh, there's also a menu on each one of the windows as you bring it up. Okay, so you'll see that I, again. You got to be specific about what menu we're talking about. I kind of breezed through the zoom controls, but you do have both horizontal and vertical zoom controls. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So the other thing you can, uh, you can do, remember I mentioned uh, the floating tool palette, yes? Remember, remember the key associated with the floating tool palette? Escape, right? So if I hit escape, you'll notice that there is actually a zoom tool in the escape floating palette, okay? So I can click on that and then click and drag and I get the behavior that I had in, in Pro Tools before, right? With the zoomer tool, okay? But for kind of... Uh, Large changes, I can use the, the zoom tools down here in the lower corner, okay? Um, okay, so the tool palette, we've talked about that. Um, I'm going to switch back to the pointer tool before I get myself in trouble, okay? And then I'm going to go up here to what are called the global tracks, okay? These are important because I'm sure uh, you like uh, most good digital audio uh, MIDI composers, uh, are tired of hearing things that are in 4.4 and that are at 120 BPM, yes? Okay. Where you can change those is in the global tracks, okay? So if you click this little inconspicuous arrow here, it'll drop down. It'll show you several global tracks, okay? One thing that you have are the markers. You can actually place markers in your composition as far as where certain sections begin. So if you want to mark where the verse and the chorus are, you can do that. Uh, you also have a, a track for uh, the time signature. So you can actually, uh, this is how it handles time signature changes. So if you want to go back and forth between 3, 4, and 4, 4, you can do that sort of thing. Uh, but tempo is probably the most useful of the global tracks. So if you click the down arrow next to tempo, you'll actually see a horizontal line which tells you how fast your project is going. Okay, it's set at 120 BPM by default. Okay, but if I want to change that, I can click on that 120 and I can move it up. So now, if I want this to go, I don't know. I'm going to go up to like you know K 
GABA speeds up here. Uh, or, uh, oh, it's not going to change on me. Why is it not doing that? It doesn't want me to go beyond. Yeah. Okay, so here. Okay, lovely. So, what does that mean in terms of the relationship between the speed at which I must play something and the speed at which I must hear something? Do those need to be the same thing? No, because I can change the tempo afterwards, right? So those of you that are like, I can't use the keyboard because I really have really bad keyboard skills, Dr. Wallach, but if you can play something at 40 BPM, in other words, really slowly, okay, you can actually record using the keyboard and then speed it up to the tempo that you actually want it to be. Make sense? So if I, okay, so say I'm one of those people, right? Which I, I, actually, I mean, I have pretty bad keyboard skills, okay? So hit return. I'll admit it. I have no problem admitting it. So I want to go down to like, oh, hey, what the heck? Oh, there's that window set thing again. Everybody see what happened there? I flashed eight, okay, because I didn't have it selected here. Down here in the temp in the uh, transport, okay, I have a, a marker called says 142. If I click type in 80, okay, that's going to slow down my project. And if I now want to, I don't know, throw in another synthesizer here, I'm going to go with uh, the polyphonic synth. Great. That's lovely. Okay. So I want to play this now at 80 because I want to play a mo melody line, but I'm not so good at the keyboard, so I'm going to record it really slow and then speed it back up. So. told you I didn't have very good keyboard skills, okay? So there. I just, uh, did I record that? No! Oh, I missed that beautiful performance because I hit play instead of record. Let that be a lesson to you kids. Okay, so rewind. I'll try it again here. And I'm also, I'm. anybody notice I'm missing this first chord? So let's fix that first because that's driving me bonkers, okay? Uh, everybody see these three notes that I recorded? Everybody heard me record that initial chord, right? But it's not playing it back, right? So if I go down to the piano roll, okay, I, everybody see what's happening here? I'm right at the beginning, but the note ons are actually just a little bit before the downbeat. So when it goes to play, the note ons are never being sent. So the same issue I was having when I unplugged the synthesizers and the note offs weren't being received, the note ons aren't being received here, okay? So it's not making it there? Yeah, they're actually before the downbeat, okay. if you will, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them. I'm going to just grab them here and uh, move them to the other side of the downbeat. So now when I hit play, there's my one chord. Great. I needed that. Okay. So let me close the piano roll. Go back to instrument two here. Okay. I've got my polyphonic synthesizer that I'm going to play something. I'm still at 80 BPM. Return. I'm going to hit record, or I'll, let's, let's try the keystroke that Al Alex said, R. That works. Okay, my brilliant composition that I just created here, okay? So let me re hit rewind, let me play that back. Okay, I don't. I I only put it at eighty because I'm more comfortable playing the keyboard at eighty. I now want to speed it up. Okay, so I can either grab this global track line and increase it, or again I can come down here to the transport. If I double click, I can put it in uh, one hundred and ninety. Great. I love things that are really fast. See? Okay. Yeah, Matt. Ah, okay. So you're talking about transforming the MIDI data, okay? Not doing a global temple change. So let me. Uh, I will get there in a minute, maybe. 
Wow, time is slipping away from me. Okay, uh, but hopefully you're seeing some new features here. Okay, let me first show you one other thing. Okay, this is I just changed the tempo for the whole performance. What if I wanted to speed up over time, not just change it to a new tempo? Uh, keyframes. Well, the logic equivalent of it. Okay, if I use the escape tool tool, tool palette here. Okay, switch to the pencil tool. I will now be able to actually draw tempo changes here, okay? Or if I go escape again and I actually use the, where's the line tool, no? Maybe this one? Oh, it's not gonna let me do that either, no. Nope. Escape, I guess I have to use the pencil tool, which is kind of, ooh, that's, I'm on the eraser tool, not what I want, okay? I can actually insert tempo changes. Okay, I'm glad you asked because that's one way to do it. If I want to, let's see here, do a smooth transition. Okay, first off, I need to select. Hold on now. I'm going to select this part of it. Okay, so see how I've got that selected? It's, it's, it turns this kind of whitish color. Okay, uh, if I then uh, go to, where is it at? It's been a while since I've done this. I know it's in here. Not that. Maybe it's up here. Options. Ooh, wait. Options tempo. Tempo operations, okay? I knew it is in one of these win menus, okay? This is where having the multiple menus gets kind of goofy in logic, okay? I want to actually change the tempo over time, okay? So I've selected this chunk of my piece. I can hit tempo operations, and look at this. Create tempo curve. I want to start out at 190, and I want to end up at, I don't know, 100, or 100, yeah. Okay, click on that. Look at that nice curve, okay? Uh, the density is how often I want it to create an event. Okay, so 1-1 one, one means that every bar, so every four beats, I want to probably do it with a higher density, something like that. And if I hit apply, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so, so, so let me play this now. Did you hear that? Yeah. So went from 1900 to 100? 190 to 100, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you do it for different sections? You said one section, I mean, one track and not the others? Uh, no, because this is the global tempo, not, not specific to tracks. Yeah. Okay. Is there a way that you can do it? Um, track to track? Uh, you would have to use a transform on each individual track or each individual re region menu, okay, uh, which is something I wanted to get to today, it, uh, the MIDI editing. It looks like I'm going to have to do that next time, so let me just uh, key in on the, the rest of these arrange window features, okay. Um, so global tracks, tempo, everybody sees where, where you might use that, yes, okay. Uh, the ruler, you do have the ability up here, there's this inconspicuous little, I don't know, it looks like an eighth note with a down arrow. If you click on that, if you're someone that thinks easier in time versus bars and beats, remember in Pro Tools we had different rulers where we could measure time in minutes and seconds or we could measure it in samples or that sort of stuff. This is kind of the logic equivalent. So for a project where time is more important, you can switch it over to time rather than switch it over to bars and beats. Okay. Um, colors and texts and notes. Oh my. Okay. Uh, this is useful. I mean, don't overlook the ability that I can click on this MIDI region, click where it says colors, and I can change it to purple. Okay, so I can make this. Uh, I can I can change the color of individual MIDI regions along the way. Okay, this is more than just an aesthetic choice. This can be very useful for finding where is that one motive that I created. Oh yeah, it's the purple one, and I can see where it is throughout my arrangement. Okay, so the color menu is very. Uh, important. As are the notes. You can actually type notes to yourself right here about the project. I started this on 
Uh, you know, I can. I'll start that right here. I start. No, it's not gonna let me type. Awesome. There. I started this project in class on 19 March. Great. Okay. So without leaving the project, you can actually save notes to yourself. Okay. Um, right here, right next to where it's colors, there's a notes tab. Okay. And you can have notes on the project and on individual tracks. Okay. Um, okay, last thing I want to show you, and then I'll, I'll just mention where we're going with our uh, unit project. Okay. <laughs> You'll notice that when you move, oh, look at that. It's going to actually, okay, click on that. When you move MIDI regions around, it's got this kind of snap feature. You know, everybody noticed that? So remember in, in Pro Tools, we had slip mode and grid mode, and you could kind of move between those. Logic by default snaps two different things. This is where, yeah, this is where the control key comes into play. If you want to be able to just nudge something a little bit, control drag gives you that smooth slip mode feel. Okay, everybody see that? So by default, you're going to kind of snap to a grid, but if you want to override that, the control key is your friend. Okay, which can help with kind of nudging something, having a little bit of a delay. Yeah. That's what it names things. Okay. But if you want to change the name of that, escape key, text tool. This is my recording in class. Okay. So you can actually change the name of a region using the text tool. Okay. So I didn't get to show you everything I wanted to in logic, but that's okay because you don't have a logic assignment for Thursday. Okay. What you do have, though, is something that you want to get to help you get prepared for the unit assignment overall, okay? You are going to be creating a new soundtrack for a video, okay? So you should, between now and Thursday, select a two to three minute video. It can be either something Creative Commons you find online or something you shoot yourself, okay? But you are not going to include the original soundtrack. You are going to create your own musical soundtrack using MIDI, using these synthesizers, to go along with it. It will either be in an experimental style or a minimal style. And I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be your choice. I'm going to assign these categories to people because I suspect that everybody's going to pick minimal instead of everybody picking experimental. Well, I'm glad you asked. If you do your reading for Thursday, audio culture number 32 and number 42, this one is ta called Towards a Definition of Experimental Music. This one is called A Thankless Attempt to Define Minimal Music, okay? So, it's like I paid you five bucks to say that right at that moment, right? Okay, so your two assignments for Thursday, okay? Pick a video, but pick a video that you feel like you can create a soundtrack to because that's what your unit assignment is going to be, okay? Um, you want it to be in a QuickTime compatible format, so don't just pick a random YouTube video that you can't actually download and have to import into Logic, okay? It needs to be something you can import into Logic, okay? If that means going out and shooting something with your iPhone, great, okay? But two to three minute video that you're going to create an experimental or a minimal soundtrack to and do these readings, okay? Any questions? That's what's for Thursday, yeah. I have a 